I think the next thing and one of the last things that pops up there is the little 32 there. There's two of them, and those are our wild flower, edible flower gardens. Ah, the Areas, areas well, there's hundreds of varieties of wild flowers that are edible. Uh, I personally am very fond of nasturtiums as well. Um, they are good soldiers. They yes. fight for us all the time. <laughs> they keep coming back no matter what you do to them, and that makes them a good soldier. Good raspberry and blackberry. That's right. Take yeah. over. Um, okay. Then last but least is your favorite part. Our historical village there. Oh yes, and that longhouse that you guys are seeing will be what I will be building. Um, uh, the, the little Roma villages over there of the Vardos or Gypsy Wagons as you probably call them is the section I'll be focused on. And then there's uh, the, the teepees. Brother Bear and Butch will be working on primarily. And I personally also will be working on the Go Houses, which is a ancient Japanese and Chinese game house yeah. that uh, was a form of martial arts, was a form of philosophy, was a form of Everything it it, it has it's really very helped. complicated game to master, easy to learn, lifetime to master, mm -hmm. and it's one of my favorite sports. I'm also a licensed instructor. Not mm -hmm. that you can really be licensed, but I was. I'm a part of the American Go Associations and able to run a Go school for a few years here in the Humble County Go Club. Uh, that and also I'll be able to set up, you know, some of the old Viking uh, games, uh, tossing logs, tossing wagon wheels. I'll be able to make the the runic circle that I want, which is pretty good sized rocks and need 24 and you know put other stuff there as well I mean anything that, uh, that my ancestors may have used I mean I could go as far as trying to build a forge in the back of the longhouse that's subterranean you never know you know yeah the, uh, the, the definitely pump. want to do some forging somewhere on the property absolutely um, you know one of the one of the big things that uh, people from from icy places do and I will keep in tradition with that on the house itself with that little bit of dirt Either potatoes will be in front of the house, along the side of the house, or growing from the house. So basically what this is, is hidden in this forest, we're going to build ancient traditional housing from different cultures. If you like a culture, that you don't even have to be from that culture, if you just like that culture, mm -hmm. and you want to build that ancient traditional home, and you're part of our team, that's what where this area is going to be. Then we'll be able to do documentaries on how those people lived, we'll be able to do video footage, because you know me, I'm the YouTube nut on all that type of stuff or just enjoy knowing that we have that connection to our ancestors there on the property and I mean you know with me it's it's not just all uh, Viking times and, and that and I, I would love to be able to put like an ancient Roman bathhouse there or, yeah. or a dojo constructed from the ancient Orient stuff like that uh, yeah. I mean there's so many different cultures and so many so many different beautiful uh, I mean, some of the buildings that they built back then was just beautiful to look at, let alone go and learn it. Last thing on the map there, uh, number 30 up in the corner over by the bathroom and by lake number one is the humanure. In other words, human composting experimental. I'm, I've been against it my whole entire life, thought it was disgusting, but I was against sushi and now it's popular. So, hey. Let's... Same here. <laughs> well, um, not a fan of the human... Uh, the human uh, Composting, composting method. method, but at the same time, I figure, you know, I've seen enough YouTube videos. Um, I, I can see the place for it. My problem is more of a personal nature than a possibly productive nature. It's just my personal I would, view on it. I would say my problem is really just habit and routine. Yeah. I, I'm used to the toilet flushes, even though I preach about the evils and how it has destroyed society. And if you want to know about that, comment below and I'll give a whole video just on how I believe that the automobile... Oh, I can do one on the cell phone if you guys want to... The automobile, the cell phone, and the toilet are the three things that destroyed society. But we'll, we'll get back to that later. Um, <laughs> that's not for this video. So but if you want to know that video, though, and you want to hear me rant about that, please comment below so that I can have kind of self-gratifying permission to do so. Um, number 34 is probably should have been the first thing built on the property because it's the most important thing, and that is the school. That would be the playground and area for our kids. There is no school in Termo, California. There is no school in Lassen, California, as far as I understand. It's all internet homeschooling, and that's wonderful. More power to you. Power to the homeschooling movement. Yep. Um, power to the unschooling movement, in fact. I love it all. 
and at the same time it gives me and my wife the ability as parents to make sure that our kids are actually doing the schoolwork. Exactly, but I love, my daughter loves the slide and loves the swings and loves the playground. Oh, and of course. We want a school. We want to offer our land to the county and our area that if anybody of the other kids want to come do schooling there, they can. My wife is a licensed preschool teacher and can handle little ones. She's a licensed educator. I, we also, she's a, got more badges and awards that you can count in 4-H from being all the way from a member as a kid to being an instructor as an adult. I'm an ex-martial arts instructor. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty much a weapon master, a blacksmith, and uh Jack We've got lots things. of people who do lots of different educational things from little kids all the way up into high schooling and would love to really offer a school system to the county. I think that covers everything on the map. Have we? Yeah, I think that's everything, folks. I do believe so. Um, let's end with something positive and something good here. Let's. Why are you doing this, Wolf? My children and my family, man. Very simple. I'm I'm tired of being in cities where I feel like my kids and my wife are, are threatened on a daily basis. Uh, I look forward to being out 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 amongst people who I can trust. I'm doing it because um, for me uh, as well. I'm getting ready to go in for surgery for my face and everything, and uh, I'm tired of of drinking. I've been drinking alcohol since I was a kid, and I figure you know if I have enough work and enough quiet peace of mind and just somewhere to focus the energy that I do have and not get that okay I can sit back and say I'm bored today feeling if, if I can stave away from that feeling which up here plenty of work to do then the more I'm working the more I'm not trying to go to a store and drink um, the fact that I feel unsafe walking down the streets for no other fact than I have tattoos on the back of my head, on the side of my face, and I'm an ex-felon. Which makes you a target uh, for cops. Tattoos it, make you a target. Honestly. Tattoos always make you a target, and I am coming up for, or actually I will be having my governor's pardon at the end of this month, but it's still like having that chip on my shoulder that I always have to have my eyes half turned towards the street to see if uh, Sergeant whoever is coming to pull me over and harass me for the day. Which is hilarious because little do they know that you're part of Manabu Farms who donates hundreds of dollars to their fundraisers every month, every year exactly. to the firemen's both, mm -hmm. to I, the Bulls for Kids' Sake. We are some of the most upstanding citizens in our community, exactly. and, I believe and I yet we're treated as junkie, drug addicts. Exactly. You know, and it, I, it's I mean, hilarious. And I also think that it's funny. I believe I was the first person who agreed to you for the kindness acts. Right. To go and write letters to the police department. Yeah. Uh, I, I Hand delivered thank you notes to the police department for the good job they've been doing, even though, you know, other people in our neighborhood would argue yeah. differently. If you look up the reports, I'll let the facts stand for themselves. But I, I think even with police, I think it's so often when the people look at them as the enemy, then they become the enemy. Yeah. If you look at them as your ally, then they stay your ally. Yeah. You know? No, and uh, the other reason why I'm doing it is, is like I've said on, on other videos, I really want to prove that the old homesteading methods, not only of, of my ancestors, but of other people's ancestors as well, and the homesteading methods that we have in a technological era now, where, you know, the, the age that we're in now, I want to take those old, those old methods, mix them with the new, and say, okay, so this is where our ancestors were right, but this is where they weren't able to progress beyond what they knew. You know, and, and I want to see what we build from that because back when, you know, back a thousand years ago, they weren't going, okay, I'm going to go buy 20, or 20 acres and plant a bunch of forest. It was, huh, there's a couple of people over there. I think I'm going to go kill them and take their land. <laughs> you know? And it's, I really do want to prove that the old methods are still viable and useful nowadays. Yeah. Because I really do much And like we want to prove in the documentary that it's viable by everyone. Yeah. By elderly, by little kids. It's it's doable by anyone to go out there and live back with nature. Exactly. And to have that, that reinstilled family sense with, with real base traditions. Knowing that, hey, I, I broke my back or I sweated all day to, to get this accomplished. And that means at the end of the year, yeah, those apples are mine because I planted them. You know, uh, let's see real quick. Why am I doing this? I'm sure I've covered this in the past, but it's my daughter. You know, I want to know when I'm finished on this earth that she has land that she owns, mm -hmm. food that will be provided for her for the rest of her life, yeah. that she is creating her own power and doesn't have to worry about that, and that she has a form of income. 
to increase her, you know, life style right. and her child's life. Right. And I understand that. Just like with my kids, I think we feel the same way on that. We don't just want a self-sustaining place that sustains itself. We want our children to be self-sustaining as well. Exactly. All right, folks. Stick with us. We're going to continue. Matter of fact, this starts pretty much today starts the time where we're going to start videotaping something every day and giving you a video every day for the next 15 days. It may not be on this channel. It may be on Manabu Carl which is my private channel, mm -hmm. and I'll be putting out my thoughts for the next 15 days as I prepare to move out on the land on the 15th of this month. So and stick my with us. And my channel is thevolknot at yahoo.com. And, uh, well, that's my email address, uh, or not my email address. My YouTube channel is the Vol or the Volknot. The Volknot. Uh, <laughs> there will probably be a link at the bottom of this for that. If not, look for it on our next video because we're going to be doing a little thing where every member of our family gets their own YouTube channel yep. and gives you a personal vlog every day once they move onto the land to tell you how they're doing. So it's not just going to be our normal one channel that tells you, you know, this is the project we did today. It's also going to be literally in touch with our emotions and yeah. what each of us are feeling so that if you're ever thinking about doing this okay. there's someone in our group you can most likely relate with yeah and then you can start to feel how you would feel in that area how things you would get along with and it also opens the doorways for communication because people who do decide to take those steps to uh to go and be self-sufficient and to go off grid like we're getting ready to do it gives them the opportunity to be able to say, hey, I remember that guy from YouTube. Maybe he's still around and I might be able to get a piece of advice from him. That's right, because we are, knowledge is the most important thing. You know, I really hope that you'll be inspired by this. I hope that you will want to contact us, share information with us. You know, we have gotten so much great advice and help. I, I, there's so many people who have given us stuff and given us advice we've gotten solar panels a trailer given to us we've gotten hundreds of dollars worth of seeds given to us we've gotten uh jeez advice we things waiting for us on advice the way. so much advice that you can't even imagine so much good advice on how to build homes There's and so many positive if, attitudes too so yeah. many people that are really encouraging and if you're yeah. looking to do this, but you say you don't have a budget, you don't have a penny to be able to do it, mm -hmm. you know what? Go over to Today's Wild Humans. Check them out on YouTube. Check them out on their website, todayswildhumans.com. They are doing everything we're doing, have been for a year, and they're doing it on a $0 budget. Not wow. like us, how we've got at least a little bit of money. We've got the government with our SSI and things like that for some of us paying us a little bit of money so we can buy these trailers, we can do these type of things. These people are rock-hard 